What's up guys? My name is Meruman. Today I will show you my day. It's so excited. No, I'm just joking. It's now four o'clock. I will start practice now uh, for two hours, three hours. And then I go to the gym. So see you in the gym. I'm back again. I'm now arrived at the gym here. Here's my place to be. I'm trying to be here at the gym five times in a week. It's very important, uh, not only practicing at home, uh, also after the practice or before the practice, going to the gym. I'm very excited for the next match day. I'm looking forward to play. Uh, we need points. We will give our best. So, see you in Barcelona, see you and yeah, we will do our best. Forza Inter, vamos! Hey guys, it's Mestor speaking. Sunny day here in Valencia today, where I live. I'm heading to the gym right now. Uh, I like to go to the gym three or four times per week. Uh, it helps me a lot to disconnect uh, from our training sessions, from match days. And um, yeah, not also physically, but mentally it helped me a lot. So I hope you to see you all in the stream, uh, supporting Bayern. Uh, let's go, Mia Samia. Well, yes, thank you to Semra. Thank you, of course, to both Merriman and Mestre as well, showing us their hometowns, if you will, saying what they do on a, on a training day. I love those additions. It's always great to see behind the scenes and pull up the esports curtain, so to speak, to see exactly how our players spend their time. But we now we turn our attentions to FC Inter versus FC Bayern München. And it will be Arda Galazzo versus Mucha hit to kick us off, Wes. A very, very fun game one between two players which historically have been fairly solid at the back in this competition. Well, it's an informal Turkish derby. Realistically, it is an informal Turkish derby. Both have represented Turkey at national level. They're now facing off at club level. And it's going to be the Battle of Turkey, I think. So you're saying these players will probably know each other quite well? Yes, I mean, that goes without saying, because again, we see, we know that these players will tend to practice against one another. They'll use the practice room as we saw a couple of match days ago, and they'll be, you know, they'll be running scrimmages almost against one another. These two, though, may have more uh, more of an idea of each other's game plan because, again, as you said, when they're taught, when they're playing against one another in different competitions, you start to kind of pick up pieces of people's game plans before you then obviously then come to this here. Well, as we're moments away from kickoff, we could talk about the forms of both sets of players. Of course, Mucha hit technically undefeated, bit of an asterisk on his record as he unfortunately couldn't make it to match day two, so. Uh, has a win in match day one against Cams, and then we will also see him uh, on match day three take a 2 1 win against Stifler. Both of those games 2 to 1. So every contest Mucha hit's been in so far has been a fairly tight contest, two goals to one. On the other side, Arda Galazzo has you know, been a bit middle of the road. L loss on uh, match day one, a win on match day two, and then a draw on match day three. So you just wonder which of those columns is going to be added to from, from Arda Galazzo. We talk, we talk about players being all-star teams and players who are relying on the lion's share of points being taken from a team. I think this is the first time that I've looked at an eFootball Championship Pro team and looked at one solitary player and gone, he's got all of their points. So four points into on at the moment, all four points have came from Arda Galassa. So if you are a, you know, as I said, if you are a participant, if you're a betting person at home, you'd be looking at this and thinking, well, he's got to get off, he's got to get some points here. And then that maybe inspires the likes of Merriman and El Matador to then kind of raise their level and get in and amongst the points as well. Because if memory serves, usually Arda Galazzo isn't leading the team out on previous match days. I, I could be mistaken in that, but to, to piggyback off of your point, it's, it's again putting a flag in the ground saying, Arda Galazzo, go out there, get us some points and psychologically give us that edge going into games two and three. And it's crazy to think that he is the main man for Inter at the moment, considering he's the youngest player in the competition. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it, but it also shows the level of maturity that Arda has in terms of he's able to bring a quality 
to his game and to his team that necessarily people at home, people around the competition may have thought, well, I'm not sure whether he's going to be that good or not. Turns out, actually, he's well worth his merit. If you speak to a lot of the players, they will point to Arda and go, this guy is the future of eFootball Championship Pro. I would send, certainly argue at this moment in time, given the stature he has with his team, he may be the president of it as well. Absolutely, you can see the referees just making sure everything is being held to the competitive integrity we've come to expect at this level of competition. There is a bit of a history between these sets of players as well in previous iterations of this competition. Merriman and El Matador notably previously playing for a German rival of FC Bayern München. And we seem to remember when the two clubs met, there were some, let's say, spicy words being thrown across the stage. Yeah, the, the UK word you're looking for is needle. You're That's looking right. for needle. And, and there certainly was, because I remember it vividly when Bayern took the lead in a co-op scenario. I believe it was Jose, which granted he has matured a little bit since then, was the first person who was across and, and giving some words of wisdom over to the opposing team. Brave, by the way. Against which brave, Maryland, yeah. El Matador, about <laughs> twice my size. Yeah, quite. Yeah, and then you look at them and you just go, now there's a little bit more of maturity that has come in from Jose first and foremost, but certainly, You've got this experience factor with FC Internet that needs to start paying some dividends with the players that they have at their disposal. As we have said, uh, you know, interestingly, I noticed from the match room or from the practice room when we were looking at things was actually I saw uh, El Matador employing R Romelu Lukaku. Now, he may not necessarily do that in the match scenario, but he certainly was doing it in the practice room. So it, it does go to say that Inter are not just sitting on their laurels and thinking, well, this is the only team that we have at our disposal. They're actually exploring their teams. It's the conversation we always have, and that we always want to see teams at this level of competition not just fall into the same meta and try and get a square peg into a round hole. It's all about just playing. Playing the hand that you are dealt and trying to play to your team's strengths. We are just moments away from kickoff once again. Seems to be the Bayern side talking to the referee, just making sure that their team selection is as they would have submitted ahead of time. Yeah, and again, when you're the likes of players that will carry 11 different formations with them at any one time, <laughs> there's a lot of information you've got to sift through. Um, and again, you know, you look at these two individuals and you look at the, the the styles that they like to employ. Arda is very front foot. He's very front foot, wants to attack, wants wants to dribble, wants to skill move, wants to find a way through. Muka here, of course, is most notably known for his defensive work. Granted, he's not shy of goals, but his defensive work is what he's most notably known for. And of course, with only having, you know, both games that he has won, two goals to one on both occasions, it would suggest that he's a little bit more of a tricky customer to come by. Just one thing that we have the benefit of whilst this kickoff is slightly delayed, is we get to see the players interacting with each other on the stage. There's been some words already discussed between Mestre and El Matador and Merriman sat behind Arda Galazzo. It's, it's psychological warfare, it really is. We're all friends, but as soon as you take the stage, you become rivals and any edge you can gain is going to be, well, something you can strive towards. As Absolutely. You can see, Moments away from kickoff now. We're finally loaded into the team selection sheet so we can have a bit of visual that we can talk about in terms of how these players want to set up and, well, what the big hubbub was about and what Bayern have up their sleeves. Well, there's certainly there's a, there's a lot to go over. And again, if you're thinking about this from the perspective of Bayern, this is quite an important game. Uh, I mean, it's it's important for both teams, realistically, because, again, Inter, you're looking for them to get some type of points on the board. Because if they don't, it's going to just make it harder and harder. Because, again, if you're looking at next match day, let's just look at it in the future, Inter Milan have Manchester United, Bayern Munich have Arsenal. They don't get easy. No, they don't. We are underway, game one of our final match of match day four. FC Inter versus Bayern München. Mujahid and Arda Galazzo. 
the two Turks on the stage, taking the hot seat for game one. Serge Nabry! Off the underside of the bar! And into the net! What a way to introduce yourself to your compatriots! 1-0! If ever there was proof that a goal always looks better when it crashes off a crossbar, it's that one right there. It's a fantastic finish from Mukahit. Again, just a little bit of trickery, a little bit of footwork, just unseating Arda's defence there. Again, it's that tap back to the back post. It's a first-time strike, it's instinctive, but it works. And it is a goal to FC Bayern Munich, and they have taken the lead in this game. Perfect start from Mucha hit. Arda Galazzo though with work to do. Goal number five, not a bad innings at all. Defending to do though, Edin Dzeko can't get the ball out of his feet, but five goals, impressive considering you're a match day down on everyone else as well. Kingsley Coleman. No pressure from Arda Galazzo here at all. It was his demise. At his demise on the first goal. Kimiik to Musiala. Corner to come. And you can see it's all Muka hit at the moment. It is all Bayern Munich. Up until this point. Really good ball work there. Again, it's it's cannoned. I mean that could literally have gone anywhere. But it's gone out for a corner. towards Delict will go out for more of the same. Back to Delict again on the knock on. Far post looking for Mane. Correa is the outlet here. Taro Martinez. Chao Hanulu can't get past Goretzka and now. Lucha hit threatening to come forward again. Lucha hit dispossesses Arda Galazzo. Sadio Mane. Tries the one two, wins the ball back here as well. It's Mane! Two nil. And the misery compounds for FC Inter. Skriniar couldn't clear his lines quick enough. You see it here. You'll see Mane just nip round the front of it, take the ball away. And Sadio Mane will put that into the back of the net. Two goals to nil for Mukahit. And you've got to feel that this may be Bayern Munich's day already. You can certainly see the theatrical celebrations, will we call them, from Mestre and Jose. Every goal claps with great enthusiasm already. Ucha hit to Arda Galazzo nil. Arda now coming forward. Hoofed clear. Brozovic to Hachan Chalhanulu, but Matthias Delict is always willing to take that one off. That 
was an ambitious ball on the half hour mark but when when you look at the two teams season so far of course Inter you know how far off the pace they've been so far but Bayern München they've been slowly taking points they've been working their way up the table and if things go their way this season I believe they could finish third just a couple of points behind Arsenal so while I did say in the pre-match segment with Semra that it doesn't seem like anyone can really catch and cling on to Arsenal and Barcelona in the top two Bayern have a chance today to prove me wrong well if you think about it as well not to mention if they are able to take a fair few points today their next match day is against Arsenal directly so they could potentially overhaul them but it would take a mammoth ask that will be a very big game indeed but Chao Hanulu has seen a pass over to Brozovic trying to cross it in towards Correa Musiala to Serge Nabry is able to do decent defensive work and now Inter on the stroke of half time almost threatened to come forward which way will the last attack of the half go if either way Inter asking that question Dzeko Correa couldn't get there it will come back into his way though Chauhanulu trying to wrestle his way through but the referee brings an end to the proceedings in the first half it's by and two inter nil and a lion's share of possession going to inter but no shots no on target whereas Buki is the one that seems to be the aggressor in this situation now, fortune in this competition often tends to favor the player who pushes the pace and tries to turn the screw as I believe Sadio Mane will be going into the book here Chao Hanulu See the cogs turning for Arda, slowly but surely. Just a little bit too slowly though, because Mukahit is able to take that one clear. Here's Kimmich. Famously a strong defender. chance there results in a corner now and Danovic called into action and that is the problem with Mucha here is you give him a two goal advantage he'll be laughing all the way to the bank it's like having a python just wrap itself around you like you just don't want to give him any more impetus in this game it's bad enough but from an inter perspective that he's two goals to the good you then don't want to be surrendering the ball to him you don't want to be giving away opportunities of course previously voted not voted earned best defender a couple of seasons ago back when this competition was in a co-op format smoocher hit so that's why we constantly are lauding his impressive defence. He knows his way around building a defence as good as anybody on the planet is Brozovic to Kalanuglu goes to the strike! Oh. <laughs> what a goal that is from Hakan Kalanuglu! 
Alan Uglu. Brilliant strike and a goal back in it for Inter. That's an unbelievable strike from deep. It's like the two Milanese clubs are saying, well, you're shooting from distance, we're shooting from distance as well. And Certainly needed it from that distance as well. That just halves the deficit as well. Hashim Chalhanulu, he's got that in his locker. Certainly has. And so has Arda. Arda has, like we said, he has got the capability to pose problems. At the moment, he's got himself a foothold back in the game. That makes things very interesting indeed, because... As we see, goal number five on the season from Arda. He can build on that here. Brozovic looking for Martinez. That's a vital flick away at the back post. Had to be made. It's one thing of having to deal with a tough defence, but if you're just striking them from range, you take the defence out the equation. Here is Mane. The issue for the opponent, though, when you strike a goal or when you strike from that range and you score, you then have to then potentially try and pressure an attacker. But then the issue then becomes is you leave the pass that can be easily on. So you're really caught in, get, in a catch-22 scenario. So Mukahit's going to have to have every avenue covered here because Arda's got more than just long-range long range strikes in his arsenal here. Way you would touch from Brozovic there. Luckily, doesn't turn possession over. Dzeko, Correa, back to Edin Dzeko, here! From 2-0 down! Oh, the Galazzo doing his very best to save into season. It's 2-2, final 15 to play. It is anyone's game now. Like we said, you go and pressure the ball here where Brozovic is, and instead you leave an opportunity there. It's a brilliant piece of skill, just a little track back, and plays in Edin Dzeko. And again, I have to, you know, when we talk about, you know, praise and apologies, I have to apologise to Arda. He's been talking to me at length about how good Edin Dzeko is. Now he's finally come to the fore. Oh, you've almost been begging them to use Lukaku. I know, I know, it's the, it's, it's the curse, it is the curse. It, it transports itself as and when it needs to. But again, as we've said to some players who are playing the game, some players fit better with their play style. Edin Dzeko may just benefit Arda more so than a Lukaku. And certainly, as we're seeing from his ability within the game, he's finding more and more out of this inter team now the question now becomes can he find a third well inter's season may well depend on it and here comes tell for mucha hit important defensive intervention Bad time to score your sixth at all, but look out for Sadio Mane! Oh! Just needed it on target, and it would have troubled Handanovic there. He yeah, needed to steer it more towards goal. It was a difficult chance to take in truth. Roy Sane. Final ten in-game minutes. Correa, Edin Dzeko, Lukaku is waiting to receive. Initially taken off his foot there, and instead Mane is now coming back the other way. Yeah. Mane on the break. This is going to be difficult for Arda Galazzo to get back, but he's done so and Still read well the play here. well. Brozovic. There's Lukaku. Lukaku, Dzeko is there as well, it's a one-on-one, -on -one. he also has a pass on, he instead goes for the pass, a little too late, Mikatarian also battling. He had such an opportunity to shoot there. This game has opened up in the final 15. 
Mikatarian. He was waiting for movement that didn't come, Arda Galasso there. Well, we're approaching stoppage time here. Is there a final twist in this tail? Lukaku. De Ligt has done very well defensively. But the final attack will go into his way, will it? Bastoni. Lukaku. Looking for Correa, heads it down. Jacko was waiting, and that will be it. Into two, Bayern two, a point rescued from Arda Galazzo. But it'll feel like two points dropped based on how he was building in that final 15. Yeah, as a, as a moment of clarity, though, when you think about it this way, but two goals down. Yep. So the reality is it really is a point well gained. Yes, in the context of the game, yes, you could say it was building towards something. And if he'd have had maybe five or ten in-game minutes longer, he may have just taken that game away from Mukit. But instead, he'll come away with a point. And as we have certainly seen with Inter at the moment, every point is vital. Now, to kind of cast our minds onto our next players as we're looking over some of the replays that we've seen, to cast our minds onto the other players within FC Inter's ranks, Merriman, we could argue, should have two points to his name. But he's had two heartbreaking moments in the last two match days. And as I said at the top of the show, I don't want it to be an, a, you know, an unfortunate hat trick. But as we're seeing here, again, Mane had opportunities that one chance that Arda had, where he passed it instead of shooting, that could potentially be a costly one. It really could. It's another situation as we see the Chauhanulu goal from downtown. Yeah, it was an unreal strike. Was Absolutely a, unreal. It was a wonder strike. And you think then, after that, Arda Galazzo, OK, he scored a goal. He's Managed to break down the defence, giving Mucha hit something else to think about. And then Edin Dzeko converts this one. And with still time left on the clock, you think, well, three different things can happen here. We'll either see a winner from both Mucha hit or Arda, because both looked likely in those final 15. Or as in the end, we had it, uh, the points are shared. Yeah, they, they, you could have argued either or because both were counter-attacking each other in that last 15. And as you see now, Merriman sat down in his chair and he's going to be up against Miguel Mestre. <laughs> Always good to see Merriman smiling on the stage, giving us a little peace sign, letting us know he's ready for the game. And his opponents, who he's looking across at now for FC Bayern München Mestre, just Take care not to drop your controller yep. when you're on the camera. It's not a good look. <laughs> Dare I say signs of nerves from Mestre? No, no. Sweaty no. hands, maybe? May, maybe. Uh, it, it's been, a, as we normally say at this point of the, the, the day, it's been a long day for everybody that has been here. If you can imagine it, again, local time in, in, in Barcelona, it's 5.45, give or take. These guys will have been here since 10, half 10, 11 a.m. this morning. So if you're the last game on the last day, or last game of the day, mm. it's a long wait. And especially if you've been sat there twiddling your thumbs. It's definitely a very long day indeed. What's fun is we get to see, of course, your fan interactions in the chat, keep them coming. We want to know who you think the eventual champions will be of this competition. But also, if you've been joining us since the start of this match, you'll know that our video messages were from both the players about to take the hot seat here, Merriman and Mestre. So we've seen a glimpse behind the scenes. We've seen what their two teammates have been able to do thus far. Now we get to see, dare I say, the two strongest players from either side take the seat. It's, it's definitely a, a close one. Yeah, it is. It is definitely. And, and again, if all those fails, if we get to a deadlock, we just have a weightlifting competition in the studio. That, okay. that we can just boil it down there. But uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the players themselves, when Merriman is on song, and I, and I mean that when he's on song, he, he has the ability to be incredible. Of course, Mestre, we have seen time and time again be incredible. 
it's just about what happens once they boot into the game. It, you know, we can we can talk about form books, we can talk about goals scored and statistics and everything else that goes in between. It's all about what happens now. It, it, you know, you can beat each other in the practice room all you want. It comes down to this stage. That's when it matters. Well, now we have kicked off game two, match four, match day four. Inter versus Bayern. The points were shared in game one. Now it's Merriman and Mestre. To take the stage and show us what they're made of. The form books don't look kindly on Merriman. Three losses on the bounce, but... And it's a big but, because he has found himself entering today in the top six goal scorers in the league. So it shows you he's not... It's not that he's not capable of scoring those goals, I should say. It's just getting devilishly unlucky on certain occasions. Yeah, as we said, back-to-back -back match winners in added time of added time against Merriman. Like we said, I don't think he'll want a repeat of that. Um, he's certainly... You know, as we say with all of these players, they're certainly not going out to lose these games. He's trying his absolute hardest, and like you said, it's just that slice of luck here and there. Martinez finds Barella. There Barella is Barella on that far side. As we turn our attentions over to the other side of Mestre, and very similar sort of storyline as we've seen thus far this season from Mestre as we did the Palmer. We've been lamenting the Palmer's form, but Mestre, only two goals thus far. It's not where we expect him to be in that category. Mkhitaryan looking for Chalhanulu. Great footwork, Edin Dzeko. Martinez with the header! It hung in the air for an age! But Merriman takes the lead into one by a nil. Welcome to the stage, Merriman. Not a bad finish, is it? Especially when it, you can see how it's breaking down. It's really good ball movement to start with. There's the ball into Dzeko. It pops up kindly. And it's a little bit improvisation of a backwards header. But again, it won't matter to these players so long as it gets in the back of the net. We don't care how it gets there, but neat little Latara Martinez header. Goalkeeper was not expecting it. And Inter have themselves a lead. Ooh. Wouldn't like to get slapped like that from El Matador. Probably dislocate my shoulder yeah, if he did a that. A little bit forceful on the <laughs> celebration, but, well, no time to rest as Tell almost wants to go straight away, but goes too early for Mestre. This really would set the cat amongst the pigeons. It really would. If Inter can come out of this match day with, like we said, any type of point scoring of note it could really really destabilize this league in terms of standings it's that gap that we spoke about would all of a sudden close that hit would long way to go but they would certainly join that race especially with their next nearest rivals AS Roma Dropping so many points today. Here's Sane. If there's a match day to get some points on the board, it would be this one. Martinez. Chawanulu back to him. It's 2 0. Excellent one-two to put Merriman two goals clear now. He has started as he means to go on. And that is tucked away nicely in the bottom corner. Doesn't give his opponent time to settle. Doesn't give the goalkeeper time to settle. It's a brilliant finish. It's really good footwork, really good ball work. And that smile that you saw pre-game it's very much turned into that scowl of concentration. Seen Mestre looking a little bit despondent with his performance so far. 
just slightly. Although I will say, I think El Matador maybe heard me and went for a gentler <laughs> shoulder slap this time around. Merriman to Mestre nil. Buying corner. Tell Kimmick looking for Tell again. This counter from Inter, very counter promising. Rick Mkhitaryan, where does he go from here? Inside, Chawanulu to the feet of Jacko Martinez again, but offside. Merriman looks very well oiled today. It's that confidence that seems to have just appeared out of nowhere for Inter. Seemingly they've had a good couple of weeks to re-evaluate what they have at their disposal. And they certainly have found those inner tweaks they needed. Why do you think that is? Maybe a case of nothing to lose at this point based on where they are in the league table? A little bit, a little bit. It will take the it certainly takes the pressure off. If you're in a well we're in a kind of a little bit of a last-ditch scenario. You are far less cautious. And as a result, you can be a bit more, play with a bit more freedom. And in Jacko with a strike. Needed that goalkeeping intervention. And Merriman showing there, not afraid to shoot. When the chance is on, he will pull that trigger as quickly as he needs to. Ball just stops there, and it's a good save from Sommer. It'll be a corner. For Inter Milan. Now this is fascinating. And it really is. I believe it's... this pause was called by Mestre. And Merriman is sat wondering what tweaks, what tweaks has he made then? Why has he called this pause? No tweaks being made until just now from Mestre. So clearly a bit of a mental reset was the intention from the pause, making sure his settings, of course, all where they need to be. Just to gather his thoughts. Seemingly, seemingly, it would be just be to gather their thoughts. Again, if you're a gamer at home, you're probably used to the button presses and annoyances of taking out every piece of frustration on your controller. And I think we've just seen that with the past support level being selected. Corner to Inter. Has to be taken soon. Towards Eddie Dzeko. Not for the first time, goalkeeper needed to prevent that man scoring. Mkhitaryan. Dzeko again, it breaks for him. Big save, huge save from Sommer. This was a really good chance where it breaks for him here. He knows, he knows how important <laughs> that was. These are such good chances falling his way. For all the bravado and for all of the voices and you know, chats that we have, body language is the one separator where you can tell exactly what a player is feeling. Corner swung in, Jacko the target. Chao Hanulu. He's been pulling the strings, really, for Inter across games one and two. Not great signs if you're a Bayern fan watching this, seeing Mestre mess around with his settings, Wes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a curious one. It's a curious one. And, and again, it's not, like you say, it's not normally a good sign if you're starting to look at what your pass support level is and, and how things are. You would normally suggest that these are the settings that players ensure that 
they have before they even start the game. So a little bit curious to me. Springyard with the long ball. Great challenge. We're five in-game minutes away, plus stoppages from half-time, and it's been a fairly miserable half-foot mess straight. We've seen, of course, the two goals conceded, but also the frustrations that have come with that. No real chances of note that we've been accustomed to seeing from the Spaniard in seasons previous. Merriman's played a very, very strong game in this first half. Yes, indeed. Luciala. Touch evading him there. Kimmich and Sane combining, are they? Yes, back to Sane! Well, that'll make things a little bit less miserable now. The goal from Sane. A lifeline for Mestre. He needed that, needed that just for the half. It changes that team talk, as it were. It's a big goal for Bayern Munich there to take that. Uh, it's just that slice of luck, takes it away. It's a, it's a challenge, or it's a ricochet off a challenge that has been read. And there's not much more Merrin can do about that, except try and instigate that block. I think even he knows that there's nothing more he could have done there to stop that from going in. So 2-1 then. Half-time still not presented itself. That's a wonderful ball to Sane. Guzens is there though, and that will bring an end to the first half. Clearance was needed there, needed to be cleared. Well, what a fantastic first half. Not wanting to waste any time into the second half now. Tell for Bayern, tell for Mestre! Oh. Audible groans that you can hear from the VIP. He was very, very close to going in there. You heard the, it's, as we said, it's like listening to a football crowd in this studio. Oh, it just it's so close. Away. So very close for Mestre, but for now, Merriman is able to maintain his lead. Martinez, Mkhitaryan looking for him again. Gagliardini. Martinez near side. Is tackled, but Bayern still come away. Sane dispossessed so well by Bastoni there. And you just see the start to the left-hand side of your screen there. Just shows you the, the the frailty that's there for Inter. They've actually scored more goals than Bayern Munich, but because they've they've disallowed, oh, sorry, because they've conceded way more. They have one victory to the name, whereas Bayern have four. So you can see the disparity there in where the frailty lies within Inter. It's more so their defensive work that needs that adjustment. Inter lose possession from the throw-in, and well, look at the white shirts here. Mane furthest forward, but maybe a little more patience needed from Mestre that time around. Here comes Mane again. Nice double touch inside. Musiala, Sane. Cleared. It's been a good spell of play from Bayern. Musiala looking for Kimmich. He is offside anyway. Wouldn't have counted if it found its way through to him. I think 
the worry for Merriman here is the fact that this has been fairly one-way traffic since the kick-off of the second half. And we'll look for Tell here. He's looking for a bit of a response from Merriman, of course, in the lead, currently two goals to one, but we need to remind Mestre. We're not just going to roll over and let this happen. Right now it's one-way traffic, that's a ball in looking for Mane. Big Bastoni at the back post, I think that's even caught me off guard. Really deep ball into the back post, it was... It had dipped enough there that Bastoni wasn't anywhere too close to him. That's a big opportunity there for Bayern. That'll bolster the Bayern fans slightly. The cogs still turning and ticking in Mestre's head. The vision is still there. The results and the execution just lacking currently. You feel that'll come with time, though. And this might bounce through all the way to tell if Handanovic doesn't get there first. Mkhitaryan. Chalhanulu with the long ball. Jacko Barea. Jacko looking for Martinez. Better from Merriman, but has he left himself a little bit exposed at the back? Tell is the runner. Bastoni's there with him, but it's Tell through one on one. Can he score here? Delays and equalises. 2 2. Call as you like, one on one. Mestre on level terms again. Had to be. Had to have that composure to finish that off. It's a golden opportunity presented by... Well, let's take a look at it once more. It's a through ball there. It's one-on-one -on -one between them two, between uh, uh, Tell and I believe it was Bastoni. And Tell's just got the wrong side of him. Managed to get the ball through. And there was a little bit of manual goalkeeping, a little bit of gamesmanship there. But Mestre didn't fall for it. As a result, it's 2-2 two, two here now. You see Bastoni get there first and you're just hoping for some kind of clearance from Merriman if you're an Inter fan, but instead it's that relief shown from Mestre. And there's still time to be played. Into two, by and two. Mestre's goal number four is one that equalises proceedings here. Martinez can't find Barea. Important intervention from Gagliardini. Joshua Kimmich looking for Sane. Has he gone too early? Won't matter. And Danovic is there. This final 15 could have all kinds of drama. Martinez trying to go inside Delict, but not falling for it is Mestre. Machan Chauhanulu, no one pressing. Mikatarian to Jekyll! Tired legs, when that type of thing happens and tired legs have kicked in. High, wide and not so handsome. You just sense there's a winner here somewhere. There has to be, there has to be, because the way that the game is opening up for both players here, there's opportunities to get forward and there are opportunities to make inroads. Mane to Sane, who goes for goal, perhaps um, 
Missed input there, going for a fake strike. Goretzka lifts it to Sane. Sadio Mane dispossessed, but Goretzka retrieves. Good bit of pressure there from Bayern, but now it's Inter's turn to come forward. Look at the four blue shirts to aim for. Can't get ahead of that defender, though. Credit to Merriman, he's giving this a good go. And that's leaving him exposed at the back tail with Sadio Mane! From 2-0 down! Mestre enters the lead at a vital time. 88th minute. Potentially to take all three points. It might not be the last minute, but it's as close enough. It's a brilliant finish from Mestre again to have that kind of powers of recovery and to really get yourself back into the game here. As you see the ball break down in midfield, ball gets given away, and then it's a through ball. Tell onside, plays it across, it's slotted in by Sadio Mane. And that might just be another very late match winner against Merriman. It's tough to see because obviously Merriman was giving it everything so much so that it left him completely exposed and all it took was one ball to carve open that defence Time to throw the kitchen sink at this one. Ninetieth minute now, and Tell has won the ball back. He's through one on one. What can he do with this finish? It's done and it's dusted. No kitchen sink needed. Mestre secures all of the points. 4-2 now. Yeah, tired legs at the back make mistakes. Again, it's not necessarily an input issue, it's more so fatigue within the actual card itself. And it just allowed Tell, who's the fresher of the two, to get in on goal and make it four goals to two. Four added minutes, but I don't think they'll do much difference here. Tell has been a very lively runner. But this one will signal the end of a very hard-fought context between these two. But Mestre will take home the three points for Bayern, four goals to two. I mean, that's a big three points for Bayern. I mean, if you're looking at their abilities and what they are, level they're playing at currently, if you look at it, where they are right now, third in the table, they're finding their feet and they're quietly going about their business. It's not land. They're not landslide victories. They're not victories where, you know, Mestre and Jose and, and Muka hit are putting, you know, multiple goals past people and then no goals conceded. Instead, it's more so now, it's more so 
they're just eking out results. They're just closing out just by the odd goal or two. I think Mestre will be relieved knowing that he went two goals down in that game and he has been in a game today. It will do wonders for Mestre's season, no doubt. We said pretty spotty form, of course, coming off a win on match day three against Gagliardo. That's the type of result that can really kickstart someone's season, especially a player of the calibre of Mestre. That will do him wonders. As for Merriman, I mean, you and I may be the biggest Merriman fans in the building, and <laughs> it's just our it's, hearts bleed for yeah, it. Yeah, it, it really is because it's it's one of those moments where you you say, at what point is your look going to change, or at what point is your look going to turn? It's two goals up, and it just got away from him. It just you could just see Mestre just start to build back into the game and get those opportunities and you know those finer points that you have within a. Bayern Munich squad with the likes of Mane and Tell and Nabri and Sane you were able to get yourself back into the game and you can just see the, just the energy just sap from him as he, as the game went on and as those goals started to go in it just it was like reeling in a you know a, a big fish as you've gone fishing you've gone looking trying it and you've just got it onto the boat and then that fourth goal Mestre took the took the oar and smacked, and smacked him over the head with it. <laughs> and that was it. That was it, but we're not done. Our final game of match day four. We'll see Inter's last chance at points. And Bayern's as well today. El Matador taking the controller. His adversary will be Captain Jose of FC Bayern München. No love lost to here with the uh, controllers. Definitely not. Undefeated thus far this season is Jose. Been slowly going under the radar for Bayern München. We know what he's capable of. But a win on match day one has had two draws since then versus the Palmer and, and Irma of AS Roma. El Matador, of course, introduced on match day three, was introduced rather rudely by Eterito. <laughs> uh, 4 1 yes. loss there. Yes, uh, very much so. Trial by fire. Now's the time for El Matador. Now he's had a couple more weeks under the Inter banner, gets to know the team a bit more to give a better account of himself. And boy, do Inter need it here. Just reading some of the, uh, the responses to our uh, polls there. Where if you had the, the choice between Latara Martinez and Kingsley Coman, and it's exactly right, Kingsley Coman would add a multitude of pace to any flank that you put him on. And you'll see there, Bayern having a curious look at Inter's lineup going into this game. Have a listen in, we're about to get underway here. As ever, moments away from kickoff, the lineups are locked and loaded for our final game of match day four. Thank you so much for sticking with us today. As there's yet more tweaks to be made here before we can officially kick off, but I mean, what a match day we've had, of course. The previous match we saw Barcelona take on AC Milan. Wonderful performance from Barca. We saw Monaco versus Arsenal, Roma versus United as well. But it all has led us to this point. Game three, Inter versus Bayern. Lukaku has entered the fray here for El Matador versus Jose. Could he yet be a difference maker? Or will it be Jose's Bayern Munich to run roughshod over into in his final game? Well, it's easier said than done. But a three points here for Inter would be tonic on the wounds, and Mkhitaryan here can nod it down towards Martinez. Lukaku still alive here. Go 
Goalkeeper needed. This is a good spell of pressure for El Matador. Just couldn't get the pass away there. And it was a half-hearted shot from Lukaku, but he was on his weaker foot. That he was. Goalkeeper saw it late as well. Kingsley Coleman. Footwork from Musiala there. Oh, Matador just dispossessing and unfortunately can't find his outlet. And this is quick passing from Jose. Lovely one touch football. Nabri. Tomane. And there's your opener. They trade blows in the 15 opening minutes. But it is Jose who finds his way through. Little bit of fortune, little bit. We'll watch it back here again. I don't think, I don't even think Jose is anticipating this ball goes to where it goes to. But again, it sometimes it's the the forethought you have to have to go. Well, if it ends up here, this is what I'm going to do. You'll watch it back here again. It's quick passing. It's almost mesmeric at one point. But it's this pass here. When it goes to here, it's a defensive, a defensive clearance of Skunara. But it's as much as. El Matador can do at that point, but it's unfortunately headed yeah. it into the path of Mane. It's not where he's intending to head it. It's just, as we saw from that Luke Shaw own goal earlier, that can be sometimes be the result of those defensive headers. It was a somewhat fortunate end to what was a fantastically woke move from Jose. Goal number five, and look out for Chauhanulu. Straight away, trying to give that immediate reply that Inter wants. And if you're looking at the form book, Jose, undefeated thus far this season, has a lead to protect now. What can El Matador do? Mario Mane tries to feed Kingsley Coleman, but Dumfries is there first. There's your lead table as things stand. It would be Bayern into the top three. Just three points behind the Gunners. With a big match day five. Clash ahead of them as well. Mane has fouled an interman there, and a bit of a let off, I feel, for the, the Milanese club. Yeah, it certainly made match day five all the more important to watch if, and certainly to, for us to be able to view it. It's only two short weeks away. And we, we say short weeks because they come very thick and fast. That they do. Two weeks to research your opponents and try and figure out new tactics to bring to the party. Koretska with a strong challenge there. Kingsley Coleman. Beats his men really well there. Tries to clip it across the six yard box, but with over half an hour gone now, Jose looks to be building something in that attack. But now Inter come the other way. El Matador once again dispossessed. Oh, and it will come through to Mane in an offside position. Ten to go till half-time. Inter fans remain strong behind their club here. Look 
Moment to Mane. Serge Nabry as well. Involved in this attack on that far side. Beats the defender but can't beat Gerzens. Now El Matador. Trying to link up with Mkhitaryan, getting involved in that attack but... Just fails to do so and with half-time approaching you just wonder whether or not El Matador might want to rethink his approach. Kingsley Coleman looking to feed Mane, who is once again offside. Certainly see questions being asked by Jose of El Matador's defence. Lukaku down to Chalhanulu. Rozovic to Martinez, this is good build-up, Lukaku involved there as well. Just rushing things at moments is El Matador. And the final attack of the half is looking to come at him here. Nabri and Mane can't combine and the referee will signal the end of the first half. Bayern 1, Inter nil. It's a slender lead, but a lead nonetheless for Jose. Signore e signori, vi invitiamo a guardare il maxi schermo per alcune indicazioni da parte delle forze dell'ordine. Einmal lang, einmal lang. Bei Lukaku vom Pals nicht. Ten cuidado con Lucas Pule, ya sabes que es un fácil. Si estás en el para nosotros. Well, you've heard the changes they want to make, the subtle tweaks. We're now underway here in the second half. Time will tell if those tweaks will make the difference. For El Matador, he needs it to. As we kick off the second half, it remains Bayern 1, Inter nil, And Inter need points this season. So far has not gone their way. Lukaku feeds Martinez with the snapshot. Forcing a corner here. That's better. Much better from Inter. A little through ball from Lukaku there. Martinez forces the save. Well, still a corner following that opportunity, but those opportunities have come few and far between from El Matador. We need to see more from him. He started this second half off well. Where does this corner go? Looking for Lukaku, but Sommer is there. Mkhitaryan down to Chalhanulu and it's very crowded there in front of that back four. You've got to somehow destabilise it if you're into. You've got to somehow destabilise this rhythm that the game seems to have developed into. It's definitely been difficult for Jose. You can tell based on the offsides what his game plan is to try and get runners in behind. Gerzens, that's a risky ball to play if you're El Matador. That sprung Jose into what is essentially a 3v2 here. Mane has just been jostled. Jostled well enough.
Referee's brought this one back for a foul. Approaching what will be a very nervy final 30 as this goal lead stays at a slender one. A reminder, it is definitely Inter who need these points. Currently sitting bottom of the table on five points. They're six behind AS Roma. Who are our next nearest rivals? Three points here from El Matador will do them a world of good going into future match days, but Jose and Bayern have similar aspirations on the other end of the table. They want to try and close in on their next nearest rivals. That would be Arsenal, and if things stand the way they are, they would enter the next match day just three points behind the North London club. Mkhitaryan with ball to Chawanulu. Upamecano can't quite stick with him as well. One back by El Matador. But that's a misplaced pass. Bit of a shame as he had bodies forward and it was looking promising. Yeah, he's got to find something else here he's got to find another gear because right now as we said it's just kind of settled into that rhythm of inter attack buying counter attack inter attack buying counter attack you've got to do something that's going to dislodge that almost metronome that we're seeing from jose and again he's an incredibly hard player to play against it's a very hard team to play against in Bayern with this inter side You've got to find something special here. There's a really slender lead as well, might we add, or might we hasten to add. One solitary goal that is the separator here. Could be a very nervy final 20. Cut out by El Matador. Mkhitaryan it's just again missing that final pass back to Mkhitaryan again nice back heel there El Matador starting to move forward now Mkhitaryan again looking for Correa will he keep this one alive no he won't corner to Inter Swung in. Lukaku's there. Goalkeeper called into action. Final 15 now. Less than. Mkhitaryan. Here's Martinez. El Matador, a show of frustration. He's banging on this door, but it just won't open for him. I think Jose there asking how many pauses he's got left. But again, as, as we know from talking to players any signs of frustration you see from your opponent 
you're basically telling them that you're you you've got them. It's basically telling you or giving you a signal of, yep, I've got you. I've got you where I need you. And again, yes, there was a great opportunity for El Matador. Doesn't quite make the finish. There's still time on the clock. There's still work to be done here. He can still find an opportunity. It's just a case of whether he can convert it when it comes his way. So after what feels like an age, the pause is done, the throwing comes in, Correa arrives! I think that one took a deflection. The throwing routine works really well. It just evaded everybody, it didn't it? It was intended for Lukaku, missed his header, and it somehow bounced through to Correa. Well, Matador laughing because he's no, he knows he's had two or three really good chances in this game. Is there another one in it for him? Well, still alive. Comes back out to Barella. Mkhitaryan now, El Matador. Just trying to bait the defence out, but anywhere will do from Jose. This will feel like an age again as... El Matador retrieves this one. Jose more than happy with where the territory is currently. Yeah, sometimes, as we said already, it doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to be effective. And right now, we're seeing that from Jose in abundance. Good ball to Sane, and there's another man over as well. Mane is just fed a little bit too late, and... Well, Kimmich won't give that one up. But the 90th minute is approaching. Four minutes for El Matador. Or can Jose hang on to this lead? A lead he's held for so long in this game. Like a game of cat and mouse thus far. Oh, and he's given the ball away. At the feet of Mane now, and Jose, he's just going to lump this one anywhere. Needs to be fast here for El Matador. I think that one is all over. Jose, it wasn't pretty, but it gets the job done. He will see that one out. A scoreline of one goal to nil is all he needs for all three points against El Matador. A close contest, but in the end, Bayern, they come out with the majority of the points. Yeah, Jose, just it just needed to be effective at the end of the day. It didn't need to be pretty. I think that's back-to-back -back match days where he's not really had, I would say, a, you know, a, a typical performance you'd see from Jose, but it gets points on the board, it gets him over the line, and it, more importantly, it gets Bayern Munich over the line as well. I said it felt like an age. That goal, the only goal in the game, scored in the 15th, 16th minute. That's a long, long time to defend. But Jose did just that, weathered all of the storms. There were plenty chances in it for El Matador. You can see that just visibly through his frustration at not taking any of them. There is the goal that separates our two players in the end. 
as you can see at the bottom of your screen. Bayern München, Semra, mm. seven points from nine. That is not bad at all. They'll be very happy with today's work. That they will be indeed. In fact, there are four teams today that will walk away completely unbeaten after all of their games today. It's absolutely astonishing stuff from everybody when they turned up here in Barcelona and really brought, I guess, um, some firepower, but in any case, um, talking about Bayern Munich, yes, in the case of Jose, obviously brilliant news for him because he remains unbeaten in this tournament. Unfortunately for El Matador coming in last, uh, last match day, well, now it's two defeats in a row. And talking about the second game between Meromen and Mestre, you have to feel for Meromen as well, don't you? Because so many times now he's scored bucket loads of goals. He's come so insanely close to getting a point, but every single time history seems to be repeating itself because in the last few seconds of the game or minutes in injury time he always seems to let that victory or that draw slip through his fingers and such was the case then again today but then in the Turkish delight derby I'm calling it I like that thank I you like that. Thank it's not you. just words who can name the derbies I like that <laughs> thank you very much in game one but well, we saw Arda coming back from behind as well and it was a bit of a disappointment for Mujahid because he would have been one of only three players to have won every single game so far this season. Yeah, still undefeated as well as Jose, as you said, though. So Bayern will be pretty happy with Mujahid and Jose maintaining their records. Of course, that's something that you... you It's a feather in your cap. You take forward, you go into the next match day with a bit more swagger than you usually would because you're saying, you know what? I don't care who I'm up against. I'm undefeated. So you've got to come <laughs> in here and try and beat me. I like that. I like that full of confidence I imagine Mujahid will be feeling that way well he happens to be with Wes right now in the mix zone so we can have a little bit more insight then as to how he performed as well as uh, Bayern Munich congratulations seven points from nine really important result today uh, it was really important of course uh, getting seven or nine points every match day is our goal and like, we got seven uh, and we were expecting really tough games against Inter. They had four points before this match day, but we knew that that four points is you know, less than they deserved in the previous game. So we were expecting tough games. And GG's uh, to them, they played really good. So yeah, we're really happy with seven points. That's good to hear. And of course, obviously for you on a personal note, welcome back. Obviously you were missing from uh, from match day two. Of course, you've had a really good set of results since then. And obviously it's my first chance of talking to you. So how does it feel now slotting into Bayern Munich setup? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm really proud. Uh, I'm representing a club like Bayern. They're one of the biggest clubs in the world and I'm playing alongside two of the world's best. So it's a great opportunity. I'm really grateful for that. And uh, I'm training a lot uh, and, and I'm giving my best to represent them in the best way possible. Yeah, you certainly are as it stands at the moment, of course. Looking slightly ahead now, match day five, it is a pretty big tie. There's only two teams, oh, well, there's two teams who we're referring to, only three points separating between you and Arsenal. How are you feeling going into that game? Uh, of course, uh, they're one of the standout teams of the season so far. And uh, they're one of our biggest opponents for top two because our goal is to be in top two after the regular season. So. Of course, we were expecting tough games, but uh, as always, we will practice a lot. We will train hard and uh, we will be on the pitch to get nine points as always. Fantastic. It's great to hear from you. Again, congratulations once again. Uh, Semra, back to you guys. Thank you very much to both of you, Wiz and Mujahid. Well, let's go ahead and take stock.